brother! Ben, let's talk about everyone's favorite muggle from Fantastic Beasts, Mary Bearbo. JK, JK, I am obviously talking about JK. Jacob Kowalski, who I just realized has the same initials as JK Rowling. That cannot be an accident. Jacob is one of my favorite characters in the wizarding world and is kind of a unique character because he's the only muggle with a starring role, unless you want to count the Dursleys, and I kind of don't because typically they just disappear after the first two chapters of every book. My lone issue with Kowalski, however, is just how accidentally part of the plot he appears to be. I mean, literally the reason he's in the movie is because Newt accidentally drops an egg next to him. That's it. Which I guess is okay, but for as big a role as he plays in the movie, I wish his involvement was a little more intentional or that he had some greater connection to the wizarding world. And guys, I have great news. I think Jacob meeting Newt was literal destiny. As destined as Harry was to fight Voldemort, I think Jacob does indeed have a huge connection to the wizarding world that he himself is not even aware of. I think Jacob Kowalski is a descendant of Helga Hufflepuff. Now, coming to this conclusion wasn't easy. In fact, when I set out, I was on the track of a whole different mystery, which was, why is Hufflepuff's mascot a badger? Like, did she just not get the memo about choosing an animal similar to your name? I mean, I can just imagine how that meeting went. Well done, everybody, on choosing the grossest sounding name for a school ever. Now on to the next order of business, the house mascots. I, Godric Gryffindor, have chosen a lion because Griffins are half lion and I'm Gryffindor. Ah, get it, right? Slytherin, old boy, I see you went with snakes. Excellent, excellent, I totally get it, snakes. Slither? Rowena, can I just assume you went with Raven? <laughs> oh, Eagle. Right, well, I mean, at least it has wings. I'm sure that won't be confusing for everyone ever. <clears throat> and, uh, Helga, that just leaves you. What did you choose for Hufflepuff House? Oh, Jiminy Christmas. Oh, boy. I didn't realize that we was doing animals. I misunderstood the assignment. I, I brought this stack of pancakes. I, oh, boy. I, uh, jeez Louise. I, I went to Wisconsin, so I guess... Badgers? By the way, I'm going to recommend that you check out the Patreon page where you can see the bloopers for that last take because, wow. Now, in Helga's defense, I'm not sure any of the animals really make sense, though. I mean, sure, some of them fit different names better than others, but it's a school of magic. Why are they non-magic animals? Come on, guys. Just another reason Ilvermorny is better than Hogwarts, am I right? Hashtag America! In any case, though, I was determined to get to the bottom of this mystery. So, much like a badger, I did some digging. And, much like a Hufflepuff, I did some finding. First, J.K. Rowling didn't even actually initially choose the badger for Hufflepuff's mascot. Initially, it was going to be, wait for it, bears. What? Yeah, I know. What a huge missed opportunity. But it's true, in the rarest Harry Potter book of them all, full video by clicking the card, J.K. Rowling leaves a note in the margins pondering whether or not fans would have given Hufflepuff House the respect it deserved had she stuck with her original mascot, a bear. Mind blown. And I kind of mean that literally because you'd think if there was an alternate animal she was going with, it would have been a wolf, not a bear. Because, you know, wolves huff and puff and blow stuff down. I'm sorry, that joke was just too obvious not to make. Actually, wolves still would have been a good mascot choice for Hufflepuff. We learn from the Sorting Hat that Helga is from the Southern Valley in Wales, which is home to much wildlife, including not bears, but yes, wolves. Or at one time. Sadly, however, all of the wolves have now been killed off. Full video for how wolves affect the ecosystem by clicking the card. But in any case, where she's from is important because the other super common animal in the Southern Valley of Wales is, yes, badgers. Not to mention, badgers are often used to symbolize hard work and loyalty, which are the things Hufflepuff House stands for. Plus, badgers build homes underground, much like the Hufflepuff common room. So yes, geographic origin and general symbolism do make the badger the perfect mascot for Hufflepuff House. But I was not satisfied with this answer. I wanted an explanation that tied in the badger to the name like the rest of the founders. Well, most of the founders. Ravenclaw. So I started investigating the name a little bit further. Helga comes from Old Norse and means holy, which wasn't much help. 
don't know of many holy badgers. Although that might be my new favorite exclamation, just holy badgers! Although I do suppose badgers do dig holes, but that's kind of a stretch. Hufflepuff, on the other hand, is pretty clearly made up, but can still be broken down into huff and puff, which, as we said earlier, can just mean to blow or be out of breath. If you go a step further, though, huff would cover those meanings on its own. Puff, on the other hand, could have a few other meanings, and the one that really stood out to me as it relates to Helga Hufflepuff was this one. Puff means pastry. And this is where my research took a turn. This was where I started making the connection to Jacob Kowalski. According to Pottermore, Helga Hufflepuff herself was renowned for her food charms, and she's the one who collected the house elves for the kitchens at Hogwarts, and that's the reason the common room is next to the kitchens. And who else in the entire wizarding world of Harry Potter is a renowned pastry chef? Kowalski. You gotta try the Ponchkeys. Now, I hear you and I agree. Just the fact that Jacob is a pastry chef 10 centuries later isn't much of a connection. Fair enough. But don't worry, there's more. First of all, let's just face it. Kowalski is kind of huffy and puffy in build. Second, he is a Polish immigrant, as in he was actually born in Poland, so although we meet him in America, his family's history is actually a lot closer to Hogwarts in Europe. And third, this is a series where the main character is a Hufflepuff, and Jacob is the walking, breathing embodiment of everything that is Hufflepuff house. He is hardworking and loyal, and much like Helga herself, immediately open to all of those everyone else would immediately turn their backs on, namely Newt's beasts. But while all of that is very compelling, it's also kind of circumstantial in terms of evidence, nothing really tying him to Hufflepuff house yet. But guys, once I was on this trail, I was positive I was correct. I mean, it just fits so nicely, and it makes you feel like Jacob just isn't in the story randomly, that he's destined to be a part of the wizarding world. You're one of us now. From there, I decided to see if I could tie Kowalski to any other known members of Hufflepuff's descendants, and I have to tell you, it didn't take very long because the list is only one person. Hepzibah Smith. Hepzibah Smith, if you don't remember, is the rich old lady that Voldemort murders and then steals the cup and locket from, but not before she reveals that she is a descendant of Helga Hufflepuff herself, and that her family is dying to get their hands on that cup. Which is important because it means she has other family. We know Hepzibah herself didn't have any children, but she could have had an aunt or something further up the family tree that married a Kowalski, thus giving Jacob Jacob his last name. And other than that, you might not think there's much to go on, but in fact, there's more than you think. For one, both Kowalski and Hepzibah are very Jewish names, which brings them at least a little bit closer together, and that relationship seems all the more likely by the only other character who might be descendant from Hufflepuff, Zachariah Smith in Harry's year, who also has a pretty Jewish name. But the real windfall here came when I started looking into the name Jacob Kowalski itself. Do you guys know what Kowalski means? Do you? Do you? It means son of Smith. What? Now, I am sure that typically means a blacksmith, but I can't help but think that this is actually a clever play on words by one J.K. Jacob Kowalski Rowling, meant to tip us off that Kowalski is actually a member of the Smith family and a descendant of Helga Hufflepuff. I kid you not, guys, my jaw hit the desk when I read that information. Do you guys have any idea how rare it is to be chasing down one of these crazy theories, trying to find a way to connect Hepzibah Smith with Jacob Kowalski and literally read the words that Kowalski means, son of Smith? Like, rare. So, we have a loyal, hardworking, huffy puffy European immigrant pastry chef who is the living, breathing embodiment of Hufflepuff House in a series about a guy who's in Hufflepuff who he's best friends with. And it gives him an official tie into the wizarding world other than sat next to Newt once. Hey, fella! And also, also, actually, actually, when they started, when they launched the marketing for all of the Fantastic Beasts North American magic stuff, one of the things they did was put a huge article on Pottermore describing how Slytherin's descendants had made their way to America. So how great would it be if we're also seeing how Hufflepuff's descendants 
made it to America. Like, I, oh, I just love the, the, the symmetry. Not to mention, as I said earlier, Hufflepuff is the one who brought the house elves into Hogwarts, and Jacob says outright that his uncle was a house elf. Well, my uncle's a house elf. Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? Is Jacob a Hufflepuff? Like, a literal part of the family Hufflepuff? Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. And before you go, I am now so excited to reveal a brand new piece of merch available on the Super Carlin Brothers store over at DFTBA.com. We are calling it Lion Snakes eagles and cakes and it might be my favorite thing ever i cannot wait to wear this thing on my person i know you want one you know you want it and great news you can have one and in even better news if you order before the end of the pre-sale next week you will get 10 percent off of that order so make sure you go check it out right now these socks are amazing guys thanks as always for watching this video please remember to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future harry potter action from us if you want to see why ravenclaw's mask Scott is an eagle. You can check out this video right here. Or if you want to see how maybe Bellatrix and Credence are related, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.